Hello, my name is Bo. I'm a lecturer in fine art and I'm based in London. I converted to Islam May last year, May 2022, but I mean, it wasn't funny, but the conversion took place very unexpectedly. It wasn't, I was basically, I wanted to get a free Quran and then I just did it somehow on the spot. Like I, my heart was already, oh, I have been investigating and my heart was already, oh, I think I, I believe in this and I think this is the truth. But then that kind of precipitated it because I, I don't think I was ready to take the Shahada, but then I finally, I took the Shahada formally in Cambridge Mosque in, in September. So, but yeah, I don't know, like there are two dates for me. <laughs> I was very, very surprised. I surprised myself. It was totally unexpected. The time that it took me to Shahada in May, getting to know Islam was actually really short, maybe just like over a month or so. But then I have been searching, I've been seeking for a spiritual path to follow for a long time, for like six years or so. I wouldn't say that I had a very in-depth experience with all of those traditions, but I was more like a spiritual window shopper, so to speak, not to self-deprecate too much, but I went from, you know, doing yoga, meditation, Hinduism, Buddhism, and looked into Taoism and into even like more new age beliefs. So I had accumulated a lot of different spiritual beliefs over time and I was aware of all of these spiritual beliefs and then when I came into Islam through I honestly do not remember how I somehow in my research for my own I have an artistic practice for my own practice I, I was researching I came across the idea of Sufism and I came across some the spiritual dimension of Islam and some of the beliefs and then I was so surprised that those beliefs actually match with all the pre-existing beliefs that I have from other traditions and I thought oh this is really interesting I'm never thought of Islam could be good. I had no idea what Islam was. I mean, I only knew, I didn't even know how people prayed. I, I just knew that there are some Muslim countries and they're Muslims, but then I don't have no, I have no idea. So then I started, okay, that's really interesting. A little knowledge is that I actually went to a Catholic school when I was younger. So I already knew about monotheism. I knew about Jesus. I knew about Alayhi Salam. I knew about the prophets and the biblical God, biblical Jesus. So I already had some kind of knowledge to that, but I never really, very soon in halfway through school, I, I had a lot of doubts and I think it never really sank into my heart anymore because I just have so many questions that I don't think that anyone could answer and it just doesn't feel right to sit right to me that a lot of the practices it did, don't sit right right with me from Sufism I decided to learn more about Islam and once I started to learn about Islam then I was really surprised at how come I didn't know about this before because everything made sense the religion like all that they've asked us to do makes sense <laughs> it seems like the truth because it encompasses all the beliefs that I have accumulated they in one way or another it's basically speaking the same thing that what I've learned before from Hinduism, Buddhism and Taoism, but I think it would add a dimension that I think I, deep down I do believe in God and that's how, I mean it's, very, it's a long discussion of my conversion journey. So that was the point in May when I, I went over to Stratford Station to pick up the Quran. Because at, at that time I didn't even, I haven't picked up a Quran yet. So I thought, okay, free Quran, that's great. So let's go and take a, take a free Quran. But then the person doing Dawa, the brother doing the Dawa there was very persuasive. And <laughs> somehow I just did the Shahada there. But I think that was a good point because that really made me, because I had already started praying at that point. So it precipitated my learning and the deepening of knowledge in Islam. So yeah, that's, that's my journey. I think one another thing that would be good to say is that because before that there was a little story that I omit because it was I thought maybe it would make it too long. It was a conversation with a taxi driver that made me go in look into what Islam is because I asked him whether I can I be a Sufi without being a Muslim and then he was like no because he follows a Sufi sheikh and then eventually we had a conversation about that and then after that I really looked into what Islam is about and then subsequently converted. So I think the message is that, you know, just never underestimate what kind of conversation you can have with any non-Muslims because it can turn into something like me, I'm an example. You just never know, like all the seeds that you're planting in people's minds and someday it can, yeah. Well, alhamdulillah, it, each individual member is quite different. My brother, whom I'm very close to, he's surprised. He's a like, wow, you're so unpredictable. He didn't expect it as like same as I, I didn't expect it, but he knew that I had been 
searching and seeking and I've been we shared a lot of these like thoughts and information so he's not like he accepted it I think he's curious he's curious so he asked me a lot of questions about this so which is good my mom didn't take it so well I think the same kind of media tropes and falsehoods that you know she's listened to like her impression of Islam is just like about violence about terrorism so but she was okay I mean at the end of the day I'm still me I'm not like I'm still my usual self so I think eventually I think she's kind of like okay about it she's just more sort of concerned that oh there are a lot of things I can't eat that uh, when I go back home you know I'm Chinese so like we like to eat and then she's surprised like, well you can't eat chicken you can't eat lamb I was like no I can but just halal and they, she just doesn't get the concept but anyway my dad is took it surprisingly well and like, she he just he was just like oh he understood that you know, in religion you know the role of religion he's he's an atheist but you know he, he's very open-minded about it as a revert because I'm the only person but well, now I have some sister circles but I'm still within my immediate family and friend circle the only Muslim so I think that's a really big struggle when you're a revert on your own and nobody around you is a Muslim and you're practicing on your own and then at workplace in your whole entire social circle and family familial circle to do it on your own it's very easy to go back because it's way easier for you to go back to where you were then to keep practicing because there's so many you know and then also there's so many things that in your life that is not Islam it normally does not have a place and now because Islam is quite all-encompassing, right? It's about like a changing of your worldview and your lifestyle and your practices. So it's difficult to maintain if you are not, you don't have a consistent group of people around you keeping you in touch with the religion. You can fall back so easily. And also in a very secular workplace, I find it quite difficult. But that's personally for me to like come out <laughs> as a Muslim. Not necessarily because of like Islam, it's about like, especially wearing the hijab and this is something that I struggle a lot and maybe a lot of other sisters do as well. It's not so much about the Muslim faith, but it's about, okay, you become, people can see you as like, oh, religious in my workplace. I mean, I think these are all my own personal thoughts. I don't think actually maybe nobody really cares. I think because I work in a university and the fact is that I actually wore the hijab for a period of time and one colleague commented on it and then but very, very positive. She was very, very encouraging. She was very like, don't worry, like you be you and don't worry about other people thing. You know, she's very, very supportive, but still I have this. And then eventually I'm not wearing it at work and I'm wearing it like half time. You know, when I go to the malls, when I go out with my family and sometimes I go out on my own, I'll wear it. But at the workplace, it's difficult because they don't know me wearing hijab before. And then I have a lot of students. So I think it's less, even less of my what colleagues think of me is my students. And because I, I work in an art school, I'm like the opposite of what the art students because everyone is espousing, everybody exudes like individuality and creativity and like being different. It is all in my internal struggle. I know no one has said anything or no one has looked at me differently or no one has commented negatively, but it's all things that are going through in my head. Like, how do I kind of like go past this barrier? The barrier is there. It's also because of the fact that maybe I still don't have a connection to the hijab yet. I think if I have a really strong conviction, just like, you know, I know alcohol is off limits. That's for me, it's very short and I'm very go with it. But with the hijab, I'm still like, oh, okay. I think that this still needs to like sink in a little bit more before I feel like I can overcome these barriers. I don't personally experience so much. I'm very thankful for, alhamdulillah, that I don't have a lot of people pressuring me. I think maybe something to be mindful of, because it has happened, uh, not very overtly, but sometimes. And I think this is something that it would be good to be mindful of for born Muslims when they meet a revert. I think it would be good to not tell them what to do. In terms of like, oh, you know, you can't do this now, you can't do this now, or now you have to wear the hijab. Oh, so I think as a river, when you're starting, it's very sensitive because a lot of people come into this faith because the faith touches them, because Allah touches the, the heart and there is some a spiritual internal changes. So it's quite, they are touched by some aspect of it, but then it's very hard when you discover more about the faith and then you discover, oh, because it's already quite a hard change. There are a lot of things that you have to start praying, you have to start um, organizing your life through prayer and you have to, it's a lot. So don't add more to a revert's life by saying, 
oh, you know, you you can't, you know, you have to be careful. Nobody has said that to me personally, but I know like about makeup, about nail polish, about there are so many other rules. And I think it's good to be mindful when speaking to River and try not to put too much onto them. Because I think I, because I want to raise an awareness. I know a lot of River sisters, sadly, if we they don't have the support, it's very easy to go back or it's very easy to have practice. So I, I think it's really good the organization helping River sisters. So I want to be part of it and help out. It's very, yeah, I understand the challenges that uh, River sisters go through. I think, alhamdulillah, I think being in London, uh, I think the support has been quite amazing and it's more, it's readily, it's there. There's a lot going on, but I can see how in smaller towns or in, I have a friend who's Spanish from an island and it's very challenging for her because in her hometown, I think in a lot of smaller towns or in more smaller cities or countries, sometimes that the Muslim community is disparate groups of ethnic communities where sometimes they may not welcome a revert from another ethnicity because they don't bother. In those situations, I think it's really challenging if you're just doing it on your own and you don't feel welcomed and those other things. So the imams, perhaps the imams in those places should start doing yeah. something.